Hey everybody, Delta Flight Gaming back again with some more God of War. So, in the last video, I was still talking more about Demeter and agriculture and about how, you know, her daughter went down to Hades and ate some pomegranate seeds, which, you know, is the only thing that grew down there, so basically she's, you know, she, and then they made the agreement of, you know, it's either between six seeds or four seeds, and basically, you know, that's what kind of the causes and seasons. And in this episode, I want to talk a bit more, hopefully I can finish up with the meter today. I'm reading off all my notes. But, uh... So there are some like rituals that are associated with for agriculture towards with Demeter and oh, I just lost my place on my notes. Shit. And you are back up there. There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. So some of the agricultural rituals that happened back then there's the proesaria no proerosia and this is the ritual of sprinkling seeds and making an offering before getting down to some real plowing if there was a lot of sex involved Kratos I always hated these enemies. Alright. <clears throat> so, we had the Proerosia, which, which I just talked about. And then there's the Haloa, which was a ritual for women only, which is actually few and far between for where, you know, rituals devoted strictly to women. Uh, during the winter, during this, you know, ritual, they would pray for seeds, you know, could be, you know, pregnant seeds or basically more toward, more along the lines of, you know, good harvest, those kind of seeds, as well as praying not to die, which, I guess that's a good thing, I don't really know a lot of people that are like, you know what, I just want to die, just let me pray to die. But, during this, ritual, this festival, instead of the women setting up the feast and then leaving so the men can do, you know, have their fun, it's the reverse. The men set up the feast and then they just, you know, go away and let the women do the whole, have their fun. And <clears throat> they'll eat basically dick-shaped cookies and cakes and things like that, tell dirty jokes, and get super drunk on wine. Uh, I mean, I really don't see much of a downside to that for women. If, I mean, unless it's like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I've ever had a wine hangover, so I don't know what that's like. <laughs> Good, my boy. Good. Athena has chosen wisely. I knew it was so. What are those coming Who out of you? your ears? So, you have the blades. The skin as pale as the moon. You are the one indeed. Perhaps Athens will survive at that. <laughs> but be careful. Don't want you dying before I'm done with this grave. A grave? In the middle of a battle? Who will occupy it, old man? You will, my son. Oh, I've got a lot of digging to do indeed. All will be revealed in good time. And when all appears to be lost, Kratos, I will be there to help. Cryptic old man. Alright. 
Next, we're going to talk a bit about Don't some of the... Don't disturb me now, son. I've got my work to do, and you have yours. And precious little time left to do either. Okay. There are some fertility rituals that have gone on with Demeter and her daughter. And the ritual is called the Thesmophoria. Thesmophoria. And it's a it takes place over about three days. And the first day, the women will go, they will leave the house and go worship Demeter and Persephone, more like either at their temple or at certain designated spots. And so that's all they do all day for the first day. The second day, they fast. Don't eat all day. But at the same time, what they do is they will insult one another and tell dirty or obscene jokes. And so that's pretty much shit talking, no eating, all day. I mean, other than not eating all day, I can't complain. I can shit talk all day. And then day three, the women break the fast, they, they begin to eat again, and they have a sacrifice and a giant feast. So, on, you know, obviously on day one, they just go to the temples or designated locations and just pray. Day two, they will go to some ritual pits and dig up, and just dig in these pits. Dig up things like pig bones and just basically just pretty much they just go dig because back then in Greek mythology, Greek or pigs were seen as more the symbol of fertility. Don't ask me why. They also um, they also bake cakes that are shaped like dicks. Um, they make, hang on, yeah, <clears throat> I need to double check, but yeah, they, you know, make cakes in the shape like genitalia, they find, uh, have snakes, dig and kill up snakes, and also find pine cones, because pine cones were seen as kind of, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, granted, pine cone is a seed, so, like, you know, it's kind of, it kind of goes along the whole, like, fertility, you know, we offer up, you offer, we offer up a pine cone because it offers, it's a seed, so, you know, in hopes that we get either, you know, our husband gives us a seed, or we have a good harvest, you know, that kind of seed. <clears throat> and they will collect, you know, they will take snakes, the snakes, the pine cones, as well as the cakes. And on the third day, they will sacrifice to Demeter and Persephone some things such as, you know, basically they'll, just cut meats, they'll eat the cakes, sacrifice the pig, as well as the snake, and offer up the pine cone, you know, just to, in all hopes of trying to. Uh, become more fertile or you know, be able so that way or maybe they're you know, the person are praying to Demeter and Persephone for maybe their friend maybe a family member becomes fertile you know just kind of something along those basic lines and so that's pretty much how they that you know whole thesmophoria there's three days it's pretty much what they do which i mean overall it's not really like a bad thing for three days you kind of go you get to leave the house go hang out somewhere else you pray to the to the two gods and you get to like shit talk your friends and get drunk I really don't see much of a downside to that, you know? 
Uh, but going back to Demeter, there's this. Uh, I've looked. I had to look it up too to get further information upon it when I was doing when I had to do a reading response about it about the Elysian Mysteries. So, with the Elysian Mysteries, what takes place is Demeter, she wanders to Eleusis, and the king and queen, they take her in. And, there's a way to kind of, like, thank, you know, the king and queen for taking her in is she wants to make their baby immortal i mean that doesn't sound like a bad you know bad downside it's like hey we took in this lady and now all of a sudden our kid is an immortal god or just immortal like so i mean there's no i don't really see much of a downside to it uh but the way that she does it though is she sticks the baby in the fire well, when the king and queen find out about it, they get kind of upset, which is understandable. I mean, you know, you come into the room and see, hey, you're a guest in our house and you're putting our baby in a fire pit. What the hell is wrong with you? So, but at the time, when Demeter was at Eleusis, she, was, she disguised herself as an old lady because she just didn't want to be recognized. I just wasted my time walking all the way down there. So, when the king and queen see this, they get understandably upset and, you know, basically tell the old woman off. But that's when Demeter's like, Aha! I am not an old woman. I am Demeter. Which, you know, clearly doesn't go too well. So, she demands that because I was trying to do this really nice thing and you got all mad about it I'm Demeter you owe me a temple I'm leaving and she storms off and so this takes place roughly towards the the Illusion Mysteries. It's more like a festival now. And it takes place in September for a week. And, you know, it was a festival essentially that was open to anybody. Men, women, slaves, basically anybody who wanted to participate in it. Could. And it's it wasn't so much like a... You know, this is, it wasn't like, a, you know, I go to church every Sunday kind of deal where you have to go every Sunday or where, whenever day that you know, your religion might tell you to go. But it was more like, it was more of a voluntary thing. It was more personal. You know, it was more about you. You know, you, what you wanted to get out of it as opposed to, you know, Oh, I gotta go to Easter service, or I have to go to... I don't know, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't know too many... Like, other holiday, like, days of, like, you know, like... Basic important days for religion to go out top of them. Like, I mean, obviously, like, you know, Christmas, Easter... Uh, I don't know. Anyways. But... In order to participate in this festival, you have to bring a baby pig. And it's kind of thought that, like, pig in ancient Greek, I don't know, I don't, I don't know too many people to, like, yeah, that's really what it means, or no, that's bullshit. But pig at the time was slang for young girl so I don't know maybe it might be pig uh, but anyways so the festival it'll begin in Athens and you know those who are like the officials like who oversee the whole thing 
they Like we got some work to do. Yeah. So, like I said, the officials who like oversee the whole festival, they send whoever wants to participate to the port of Pariahs. And when they get there, they bathe not only themselves, but they also bathe the little baby pig that they carry. And then they start to walk. I know that the Pariahs is still within Athens. It's at the port. So they just head down to the port, bathe themselves, bathe the pig, and then they walk 14 miles to the sanctuary at Eleusis. And when they get to the Cephesus River, there are people, like other people who are participating, it's kind of like, like a fun run, how there's like, or like a marathon run, how there's always the people handing out water. It's kind of like that same thing. There are people down there. Hey, I'm working here. So anyways, so when, you know, when they meet, they, when, they, uh, when people who are attending the festival get to the Cephasis River, the people who are there are wearing masks with like, looking like people, you know, younger men, women, whichever, and they kind of mock you. Ha ha ha, look at you, you won't finish, blah blah blah. Right, so yeah. Lady, I'm working. So, while they're on their walk, that 14 miles, they're not eating. You know, it's just, you just have to go. You, know, you can't bring food, can't bring water, you just have to go. And... Help. When they finally get to Eleusis, they sacrifice the pig. Baby pig is gone. And offer up cakes as well as barley, which I don't remember. Is barley like a herb? Like a oregano kind of herb? I don't remember. I know I've heard it before. But they offer up the, pig, the cakes and the barley to Demeter. And once they get done, they, you know, walk around the sanctuary, just kind of enjoy the festival, that it's, they made it that far, kind of thing. And, you know, once they get done walking around that, then they enter what is known as the Telestrion, which is the Temple of Demeter, and it's the, you know, Temple for the Sacred Rites, and for anyone who wants to be, uh, for those rites to be initiated. And the thing is, it's not a lot is known about what goes on inside the temple, mostly just because of the fact that it's still, it was like a really, like, wide-kept secret. And anyone who wanted to be an initiate, they were taught some sort of ritual, or some sort of, like, sacred oath or vow that they, you know, swore to secrecy not to tell. And... When later on, like when other scholars of different religions were studying this, some of them were Christian, they talked about how it was feasting, drinking something, and or feasting, eating and drinking, and then there was something about opening and closing the box. But that's as far as we know. So it's kind of hard to know exactly what was, you know, what's in the box. No one really knows. So hopefully I can be, I think I might be close to the end here with this. So basically just kind of like an overview of much what I've been rambling on about with, you know, Demeter is she's the overseer of agriculture as well as death but she's the overseer she's not like Kratos, you know slipping. you must get here quickly i can help you we can save athens but you must hurry
Yes, I know how to wall jump. Thank you. Well, now I'm tied. Right. Like I said, Demeter, she's the overseer of agriculture. As we know, you know, she stopped doing her duties when her daughter went missing. And like I said, it's kind of the overseer of death as well because of the fact that, you know, when she stopped doing her duties, pretty much everybody's harvest just died. Um... So, when it comes to, like, some of the agriculture, as well as some of the death, like, things that occur with, like, the death rituals, you know, like washing and cleaning the body, presenting it, things like that, women tended to have more um, experience with that, and more especially, also with more of the agriculture than it would be with the women. And there was a trophy right there, act, too. <clears throat> Kratos set in motion the events that would lead to his downfall. Kratos, as Athena herself has foretold. But you are late, perhaps too late to save Athens. Or is it Athens you have come to save? No, I, I can't! We must not stop! And when the Oracle no, looked into his soul, she saw a beast as well as a man. Once a captain in the Spartan army, Kratos had begun his command with only 50 soldiers. But soon his numbers grew to the thousands. His tactics were brutal, but effective. Drunk with power, he was feared by all, except one. His wife was the only one to brave his fury. How much is enough, Kratos? When will it end? When the glory of Sparta is known throughout the world. The glory of Sparta. You did this for yourself. His desire for conquest knew no bounds. But that which he desired would ultimately consume him. By the gods, why would Athena send one such as you? Stay out of my head! Choose your enemies wisely, Kratos. Your brute strength alone will not be enough to destroy Ares. Only one item in the world will allow you to defeat a god. Pandora's box, which lies far beyond the walls of Athens, hidden by the gods across the desert to the east. But be warned, Kratos. Many have gone in search of Pandora's box. None have returned. All right, well. Go through the gates to the desert, Kratos. There begins the path to Pandora's box. It is the only way you will defeat Ares and save Athens. Okay. So, hopefully you guys have learned a little bit more and are enjoying me pretty much talking about my Greek mythology class and the notes. <clears throat> so, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I... We'll see you guys in the next video.